All right, so Sirianni becomes the choice. His experience is what it is. Anytime you get someone who's uh, becoming a head coach for the first time on any significant level, I'm not going to count high school football as a significant level, it's a bit of a stretch. It's a bit of a reach. It's a bit of a gamble. Why is Nick Sirianni going to be able to, if not hit the ground running, at least be able to get his footing year one as the head coach of the birds? Look, I, I, I say about head coaches, and I said this about Doug Peterson, and I think it's pretty evident that if you're hiring a scheme, you're, you're, you're making the wrong decision. Coaching is about teaching. It's about reaching people. It's about relationships. It's about managing personalities. That's what Doug Peterson did so well right up until he wasn't able to do it with Carson Wentz at the end. Uh, can Nick Sirianni do that? I don't know. You saw the energy, Jody. Let's talk some ball. Appreciate your hopping aboard. Here with us on Birds 365, it's the Mac and Mac guys, Jody McDonald and John McMullen here with you. Where are we going to be talking Birds 365? The name of the show kind of says it all. We'll be doing it each and every single day going forward. Um, Johnny Mac, I did want to do some Eagle coaching staff today because I think it's important. A uh, major aspect of the change this organization underwent during the offseason was the uh, retooling of the coaching staff, Doug Peterson out, and Nick Sirianni in. We start at the top with Sirianni. A, a bit of a surprise choice wasn't a candidate who was getting other interviews out there with other teams. Uh, they met with him. He won the owner over. They were pretty aggressive in getting the contract done and getting him in. Did the Eagles get their right guy in with Nick Sirianni? Well, I, I don't think anybody knows. If if you were asking me, I think the right guy was Doug Peterson. I've been very, very consistent with that. I, I don't think they should have moved on. I think it was a mistake. So from that point forward, I, I do think, and, and this was a strange marriage, I, I do think if we were left to his own devices, I think Howie Roseman would have hired Josh McDaniels, I think, He'd be the head coach of the Philadelphia Eagles, which is interesting. And I criticized Jeffrey Lurie a lot through this process. But one place where I did not, Jody, he recognized that that would not work. Look, Josh McDaniels can say all, everything right. Howie Roseman can say all the right things. Those two would have not gotten along long term. And that would have blown up. And there would have been a similar situation uh, to what happened with Chip Kelly. So from that standpoint, I think Jeffrey Lurie did a good job in saving Howie Roseman from himself. I'm sure the fans are not going to like to hear that. Uh, and then you move forward. They went through this exhaustive search. I think they interviewed 10 different candidates. I think he was going to keep going, Jody, until he found somebody that he liked better than Josh McDaniels. And that's how he landed on Nick Sirianni. But he certainly wasn't uh, as we went back to 2016, Doug Peterson, Plan C. I don't know what you want to call Josh, uh, Nick Sirianni, but wasn't Plan A. I will say that. At least on my airwaves, on the shows that I did, and there are many reasons why it would be the case. I want to get yours. It seemed that Deuce Staley was the most popular choice. Not that Eagle Nation should decide who the Eagle coach is. I do believe Jeff Lurie has a pretty good read on the pulse of the Eagles fans. And I think he acknowledges them. And I think uh, when it's a, a perfect fit for him, he'll do what the fans want him to do. That was not the case here. Nobody really was thinking about Nick Sirianni until he got the job. People seem to want to see a homegrown guy get a shot and do Staley be the choice. He got an interview again. He has moved up the ranks in the Eagle coaching staff, but never when he is interviewed for the head coaching job before, including when Doug Peterson got it uh, just several years ago. I never felt that the Deuce was a main candidate. Should he have been? Did the Eagles not give Deuce a fair shake 
in this? Is Deuce going to get a head coaching job in this league some year? Well, I, I think it's up to Deuce and what he does with the Detroit Lions. Dan Campbell, we mentioned, uh, you know, I, I mentioned Doug Peterson and, uh, and excuse me, Andy Reid and the fact that he takes pride in sort of grooming his guys to be a head coach. From everything Dan Campbell has said, um, when it comes to Deuce Staley, he is going to to groom him. He he has said on, on the record, this is a real assistant head coach. This is not a title. This is my guy. This is the second in command. And if the Lions turn that around, because I think a lot of people look at that hire, Dan Campbell, and say that's not the best hire in the world. So if he ends up elevating that program, which has not been very successful, I think there is a very good chance Deuce Staley becomes a head coach in this league. But I will say he had to leave here. The Eagles were not seriously considering him. He wasn't going to be a head coach here. For whatever reason, uh, it just wasn't on their plate. And maybe it's it comes back to a little of what Jeffrey Lurie said about Nick Sirianni. Nick Sirianni was in Kansas City. He was with the Chargers. He was with the Colts. He had been in different places. You know, Jeffrey Lurie kind of intimated Deuce probably had to go somewhere else to get a little bit of different experience. I don't necessarily agree with it, but that's how the way the Eagles and Jeffrey Lurie specifically looked at it. All right. So Sirianni becomes the choice. His experience is what it is. Anytime you get someone who's uh, becoming a head coach for the first time on any significant level, I'm not going to count high school football as a significant level. It's a bit of a stretch. It's a bit of a reach. It's a bit of a gamble. Why is Nick Sirianni going to be able to, if not hit the ground running, at least be able to get his footing year one as the head coach of the birds? Look, I, I, I say about head coaches, and I said this about Doug Peterson, and I think it's pretty evident that if you're hiring a scheme, you're, you're, you're making the wrong decision. Coaching is about teaching. It's about reaching people. It's about relationships. It's about managing personalities. That's what Doug Peterson did so well right up until he wasn't able to do it with Carson Wentz at the end. Uh, can Nick Sirianni do that? I don't know. You saw the energy, Jody. Let's talk some ball. I, I, I mean, to me, it seemed a little orchestrated, uh, trying to uh, – you know, his opening press conference was probably not the best. Uh, I think he, he rebounded a little bit in, in press conference number two, but none of that matters. Winning a press conference, uh, looking good in front of the media. You know, Doug was killed when he got here uh, because of his inability to handle press conferences. So none of that matters. Can he manage personalities? Can he uh, uh, get everybody moving in the same direction? Can he handle 65 guys in that locker room? Uh, he has no experience to do that. I will say this, Jody, there's going to be growing pains. There's going to be growing pains. It's a matter of can he get through those growing pains? I've uh, told this story on here many a time. Uh, I've been to several Eagle coaching hires being on the air in town, uh, mostly on rather than off over the last 30 some odd years. The coach who motivated me the most was Ray Rhodes. After his opening press conference, I was ready to strap on the pads and try and run through a wall. I thought he was phenomenal. He had me pumped up and psyched for the upcoming season. And Ray's career here in town was what it was. Got off to a decent start, but then went backwards pretty badly pretty quickly. Um, so you can't judge by first press conference. You're absolutely yeah, right about no. that. Um, so Sirianni is the head coach, and he's put his staff together. He's an offensive guy. He was offensive uh, coordinator under Frank Reich in Indianapolis. So his offensive coordinator has got to come in and know that he's not full autonomy, that he might be given a chance to call plays, and he's certainly going to be a guy who they're going to lean on. But when you've got a head coach who's coming from the same side of the ball that you are, you're not even 1A, you're B. There's A and then there's B. Shane Steichen and his relationship – with the head coach and how they're going to call the plays and the like. I know they haven't really committed to anything. How do you think it's going to break out? 
Well, I do think it's going to be very similar to Doug's relationship with Frank Reich and Frank's relationship with Nick Sirianni in Indianapolis. It's going to be a, a guy who's running the offensive meetings, uh, and I'm talking about uh, the delegation uh, as far as Nick Sirianni and Shane Steichen. So Shane will run the meetings. Uh, he'll be heavily involved in game planning, but Nick Sirianni is going to call the plays, and it's his first time uh, calling plays. So you always have to and, – and that's a big thing, by the way, Jody, because Doug Peterson, same thing with him. Uh, Andy would give him uh, a quarter here, a quarter there, but never full-time did he call plays in Kansas City. So when he arrived here, it was the first time for him as well. Uh, and people get really caught up into that. And I, I, I think it's overrated. I always say we, we don't judge play calls, Jody. We judge uh, Result. play results. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we judge results. You have no idea what run. Now, you can be a film guy. You can get the 99 bucks up for NFL game pass. And you can say this guy made this mistake. Bottom line is it's about execution. So, the old great John McKay line uh, with the horrible fucking ears, one of my favorite NFL lines ever, uh, asked about your team's execution. I'm all for it. That's what the NFL is about. That's what it's always been about. You think about it. I just mentioned that. You can go on NFL Game Pass today. You get the all 22. Who do you like? Kyle Shanahan. Who do, who do you like? Andy Reid. You can copy everything they do. It's about teaching it. And it's about executing it. And and that's where it they'll be judged, ultimately. And it's all a big unknown, let's be honest. Uh, we're talking Eagles coaching staff here on Birds 365, about the head coach, about the offense coordinator. Defensive coordinator Jonathan Gannon, um, again, uh, certainly a pick by the head coach to come in here and run this defense. The defenses that he's been associated with Certainly different than the one Jim Schwartz has have been associated with. The Eagles have a little bit of a turnover, a couple of free agents lost, a couple of free agents added. Um, there will be new personnel on the defensive side of the ball. Will the defense look different? Will it play defense different? What do you think Gannon is going to try and implement in here as the new Eagles team? Well, I think you look at Indianapolis and you look at what they did there. And also before he was in Indianapolis, he was with Mike Zimmer in Minnesota uh, for a long time. So I think you look at those two particular defense, a lot of similarities. I think they're going to place more emphasis on the linebacker position. You think about Darius Leonard uh, and what he was for the Colts defense, what he is. You think about Eric Kendricks in Minnesota, Anthony Barr, so I, I do think they'll put more emphasis on that position. I think you'll see more cover two, cover, cover three on the back end. You know, the one sort of high-profile signing the Eagles have made is Anthony Harris, who was in Minnesota with Gannon, with Zimmer, had a lot of success as a coverage safety. Uh, so I think you have a, a, a few hints, a few uh, – uh, crumbs to lead you to what it's going to look like. And it is going to be a little bit different, uh, but it's going to be a 4-3. It's going to, first and foremost, I mean, Mike Zimmer's the same as Jim Swartz when it comes to the defensive line. He, 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 he needs pass rushers. He's successful with pass rushers. He wants to get home with four. The difference is all that A-gap stuff. They like to sugar the A-gaps. They like to fool the quarterback. They like to uh, drop out into coverage with Kendricks and Barr. Sometimes they blitz. Sometimes both blitz. Sometimes one split. A lot of different things. Very complex defense. Question is, can you teach it? Because when you get into a complex defense, everybody's got to be on the same page. Then are they going to be able to understand it, even if you can teach it well? You got to be able to get it uh, through to your players, and we'll see if the Eagles have that right group. All right, we gave you a look at a couple of Eagles coaches. We'll probably get a couple more in uh, before we wrap up today's show. But we need to take a time out here because we got a guest scheduled to join us. Rob Marty covered Eagles for years for the Associated Press. Actually, I had a pretty good working relationship, maybe the best working relationship in town with the ex-Eagle quarterback, Carson Wentz. 
Rob Marty joins us next here on Birds 365. If you missed any of today's show on the Jacob Media channel, listen to the podcast on your way home. Available on YouTube, Apple, and Spotify.